Hi guys, it's refreshing to hear people like barrister Sam Fowles explain to the media why the focus on an issue like shoplifting should be less on the crime itself, but more on the underlying reasons behind it. Sam appeared on Sky News to cover the story of how this particular offence is basically going unpunished due to both the cost of convicting individuals, but also how prisons are completely full already. But in order to tackle the problem, a more proactive and less reactive approach is necessary. Have a listen. My problem with this is you're looking at the symptoms, not the causes. We've got, we do have a shoplifting epidemic, but we also have 20% of people in poverty. 2.8 million women can't afford sanitary products. 4.3 million children in poverty. And we've had for a long time, and this is not a party political point, this is governments of all colours and stripes, have for a long time kind of taken this attitude of the state can't really help you if you're in poverty. The state's not going to intervene. You have to be individuals. You have to help yourself out. And people... People haven't been able to do that. Poverty sure, some just government ministers up. would disagree with that, that they would say they have done some work, they probably would argue, but well, well, other I think pe- I'm sure many people say they didn't feel as though they've received that. Yeah, and I think it's more of, a, more of an attitudinal sit- shift, actually. It's, you know, we, we, we saw it this, uh, j- just yesterday with um, m- members of parliament saying, let's help mm. children in poverty, mm. look at the two-child cap, mm. and ministers saying, look, there is not enough money to help put people in poverty in that way. Big issues, big topics, which we don't have enough time to get. Sam made a very valid point here about how, you know, there's this attitude that, and this is from the media, of course, the media working in tandem with governments, how, you know, the government is not there to help you. You have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You need to pull yourself out of poverty. The government will create a mechanism for you to achieve that, but it, um, it's up to you at the end of the day. Like, we know that poverty leads to crime. If you want to truly deal with a lot of crime, you deal with poverty first. But certainly right-wing governments, the Conservatives over the last number of years, have been reacting to poverty, reacting to crime by trying to punish people more. Instead of actually, as Sam has pointed out here, looking at the fundamental um, causes of poverty and crime. So as, as the two are linked, if you're able to resolve poverty, you're going to resolve a lot of crime. But the reaction, once again, it's, it's cheaper, it's easier just to come down hard on criminals, say we're going to put more people in prison, and you, of course you're not going to fix the problem. But back to the main point here, I think, is the fundamental one. This concept that you know there is a social contract, you're supposed to follow the rules, you're supposed to respect... Um, the rule of law and everything like that. You're supposed to uphold your side of the social contract, but the government doesn't have to uphold its side. And of course, its side of the social contract is by cre- is that of creating a social safety net so that if people do fall on hard times or if they're in a difficult, difficult situation, that they have support from the government. The Conservatives, and let's hope it's going to change under the new Labour government, but the Conservatives over the last 14 years have been undermining that social contract expecting citizens to help uphold their side of it, but not upholding the government side of it. Convincing people, if you're poor, there's something wrong with you. If you're rich, it means that you're a good person. You have worked hard. And we've heard this horrible language from time to time. You know, people working hard, sending their kids to private schools. You know, obviously that means that if you don't send your kid to a private school, it means you're not hardworking, you're lazy. That's all we can take from that. So it's about creating a divide. The poorest in society remain poor and the richest in society get richer. And they're right to to get richer. And if you're poor, once again, it's your own fault. That has to change. And if the new government is able to put in measures to help people out of poverty, of course, this is going to alleviate some aspects of crime. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.